Yes, we are live. We're live. We're live. Welcome to the you on, real not estate on your news. Instagram live though, so you don't get all those ridiculous comments. I know, I know. So if you want to leave ridiculous comments, please do in the comments section below. We're going to have four news articles, two that he brings up, two that I bring up. He doesn't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what he's going to say. Yeah, I'm really good at that. I've gotten very good at that. <laughs> what number are we up to? Twenty-six. Yeah. Yeah. Second yeah. season. If Second season. Correctly. Yeah. This is the season in which we take off. I We're agree. going to be on CNBC, Fox Business. It's going to be all over the internet. Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> your favorite platform. All right. You want to start it off? I'd be happy to. This is a great article. Renters are about to get the upper hand. Woo. That's why, remember I mentioned it yesterday? I was like, you got a good article for you because Charles was like, oh, nobody's showing up to my rental listing. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I was complaining. Apartment rent growth is declining fast shifting the rental wow. market to the tenant's favor for the first time in years. That is the new lease rents are poised to fall on an annual basis for only the second time since the 2008 crisis. Wow. Crazy. 2008? So, yeah. Wow. Well, think about that. That's how often rents go up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. only been two times. Forever. But uh, it was really interesting. And of course, they are talking nationwide. Uh, but it is true that I feel like I can see a little bit of that in the uh, market these days. So I feel it. Yeah. I mean, just with the sense that you've paid a high price, then, you know, it's hard to get a renter, a new renter to pay that price. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. We're going through that right now on one apartment, literally in one month. It's funny. People used to say it's seasonality it's like week to week it's not even month to month or seasonality it's just week to week i agree here in the plus you know one last thing on that is that uh i've been noticing a lot of the boyfriend girlfriends moving back in together i remember that the roommates didn't want to live together during covid yeah it was all the germs yeah so now they broke up and then they were starting to do uh studios now they have dogs they need bigger apartments now they've got the roommates they've yeah. got the boyfriends and the girlfriends and the studios are having a lot more turnover kind of like it's like it used three's to be. a company yeah, yeah. nobody, three's want, a company no, nobody wants City. to spend you know a ton of money on a studio they yeah. would actually go hunting for a one bedroom uh that they can fit their dog in yeah <laughs> so we shall see we'll track the rental market this is going to be a gigantic, a really big development that's going to be happening in New York City. So this is about Silverstein joins the casino competition for the bid on the Far West project. So this is a 92,000 square foot vacant lot that is right near the Jacob Javits Center, which is on the west side of Manhattan. You have Hudson Yards right around there. Jacob Javits is north of there, 42nd Street. And they have a lot of bids. <laughs> You have Silverstein, Related, SL Green, Vernado, Thor Equities, and Solove Group. That Those are like the biggest players in New York City, and they all have bids to build. Uh, Silverstein's is, a, is two 46-story towers linked by a sky bridge, 1,000 hotels, 600,000-foot gaming and entertainment facilities. So essentially, they want to bring a casino to New York City. That's a yeah, I uh, saw that article, saw about Silverstein, saw all the uh, developers that are wanting to get in there because who wouldn't? Who want, doesn't want to be responsible for building a 92,000 square foot vacant there. lot? You know, the, I, I'm, I'm mixed on that, you know, with yeah. uh, the idea of the casino and the yeah. gaming. I mean, every other city I feel like does have that, so why not New York? But at the same time, uh, so, so there is a little negative uh, thinking about it, but then at the same time, I like what they are trying to do on the west side. Yeah. You know, that area by the Port Authority isn't the greatest. And it goes all the way down to, uh, you know, the Penn River. Station yeah. and, and whatnot. So now when you're going like just a little further west, maybe having some really nice new development over there will change things. Well, Hudson Yards has definitely changed things over there. I yeah. know... Two people that live over there and they love it because they literally have all the shopping. It's a whole neighborhood. You have all the restaurants, you have all the food, you have all the gyms, you have the West Side Highway. The only problem is you're kind of just in the middle of 
Hudson Yards, which is pretty far away. Yeah. But they're beautiful apartments. And they're in, to be honest, they also brought up there's another casino bid on the far east side on the East River. I forgot who was going to go for that, but that was also going to be a casino. That's probably so well. Yeah. Because that vacant lot on First Avenue has been like there for ever. Oh, that's where it is? I have no idea. Wow. It's just all a guess. It's all speculation, kind of like a gamble. (laughs) What is your article? All right. Uh, Very good article here. Can't wait. Yes. You will be excited to hear that Manhattan's luxury market is on track for the second best June on record. Wow. Yeah. He's excited about that, but then he's like, why didn't I get a piece of it? (laughs) So uh, $4 million apartments are driving the market. Yeah. Uh, It's, you know, the numbers are actually staggering. Yeah. It is unbelievable how the higher end uh, luxury market has really taken off. In fact, before this article was even written, did you hear that at one high line, the building they just got a contract out on their $52 million penthouse, which would be the highest sale, one of the highest sales in downtown Manhattan ever. Yeah. 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 If you really think about it, because you don't have the gigantic luxury billionaires row style condos. So everybody's eyes are on 52 where, million. Everybody's eyes are on where that is actually going to close. Yeah. But uh, you know, what is the price per square foot on that? I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that was not in this article. That's that was just wild. last night. Yeah. Uh, so June. Yeah. Record after record about the luxury market. Yeah. Which is it was kinda, townhouses. You know what it did? It caught a lot of people off guard. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? In uh, That is replacing the two million and under has really uh, you know, slowed down significantly, which was the leader out of COVID. Yep. And now it's, uh, you know, the luxury market, which like Big we mentioned surprises. a couple months ago was it's cash. Most of these deals are yeah. cash. And so it's, you know, parking your money on luxury properties. And like we mentioned a couple of weeks ago as well, is that new developments are coming up. So yep. this is your chance to get a trophy property because there aren't many new developments that are going to be comparable to these you know, places that are being built right now. Yeah, they look at the market and they say, what's the best one, what's coming available? There's not a lot coming available. Let's pick this up. Yeah. And to be honest, new developments are just uh, too expensive to build in the city. So understandable. Talking about expensive, we had, uh, this is gonna be a double wide we've been talking about commercial real estate all year and now the deals are happening so blackstone sold a 14 million square foot industrial portfolio for 3.1 billion dollars to a japanese fund and that was uh pretty surprising um listen to this so the acquisition price approximates a four point or 4% cap on the first year and 5.7% cap on the second year. So it's kind of interesting, it went cash. The second one was SL Green announced the sale of 49.9% interest in 245 Park Avenue. So Park Avenue is essentially gonna become a, so the SL Green bought it and they knew that they were going to look for a partner. They weren't gonna own it outright and they sold it off to, I'm sorry, this is actually the, the Japanese uh, trust that came in and they valued at $2 billion, the asset. So it's very interesting. Blackstone, which we talked about a lot, selling off an asset, $3.1 billion cash. And then SL Green announces that almost half of a $2 billion asset, which went cash as well to a international fund. So deals are going to be made, you know, I guarantee there's a lot of people that are excited about a commercial real estate market that is going like this, especially in New York City. So as much as we talked about, it's going to implode. We see it all over the news. What what are your thoughts on deals like that happening? Those are, you know, that's $4.1 billion in one week. Yeah. And just two uh, deals. I saw that deal on SL Green and good on them yeah yeah I just look at it where investors are savvy they're smart person that's buying 52 million dollars oh, so who's the savvy one in that it's the person that comes in and probably <laughs> bought it or is it SL green for dumping it 
Well, they and just keeping, bought it. And keeping control and interest. They just bought it la in Q4 last year. So they knew that they were going to bring in uh, a partner. So whether they bought it at a discount and then offloaded it maybe at a profit. Maybe it's two savvy investors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think a long-term hold on Park Avenue, 6th Avenue, all these gigantic buildings is a smart way. Yep. They'll find a way, whether it's WeWork or something else, they'll find a way to get... Park Avenue South is a great place. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So those are the four articles today. We're going to be going live next Wednesday, right after July 4th. Enjoy your weekend. We're going to have... Don't get uh, sunburned. I hopefully will not. All I, right. I, 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 we're, we're looking a little, you know, Watch redder, for, redder. Uh, all right. Watch well, out for those fireworks. <laughs> Enjoy your week, and we will see you.